Continuing our market coverage right here on Bloomberg Television, counting you down to the close with a little more than 50 minutes to go. Interesting note out, City Muni strategist out with a note saying that in the face of all this banking turmoil, anemic new issues and strong demand for tax-exempt security should offset any near-term spread widening that banks sell municipal bonds to ease liquidity pressure. Joining us with her perspective is Eve Lando, Portfolio Manager over at Thornburg Investment Management. Eve helps manage nearly $7 billion in municipal bond strategies. And let's start there, uh, Eve. I mean, we saw, I think it was at the tail end of last year, where we sort of saw these big returns and this big appetite for municipal debt as sort of the worst-case scenarios that people thought was going to come out of the pandemic didn't materialize. Now you have this latest crisis. Is there any real material effect on the investor psyche in the municipal space as a result of what we're seeing? Um, I mean, good question. In terms of intersection between munis and the banks, uh, the risk of contagion is very low. And actually, if anything, since March 9th, munis became more expensive, That a rally that started back in November. Uh, on the front end, we gave up as much as 40 basis points in yield. When thinking about munis and the bank, uh, kind of three things come to mind uh, what would attract attention. Uh, first is just how much muni paper, how much tax-exempt paper is being held in the banks. Second one is uh, short-term tax-exempt muni securities mm -hmm. that have uh, standby purchase agreements, letter of credit from the banks. And the third one is less known, something that we call prepaid gas bonds, uh, which ultimately have banks as uh, guarantors, obligors. So those three sectors come to mind uh, in terms of overall munis being held in the banks. Yeah. Uh, the numbers I've seen were around 540 billion. Right. About half of it is in direct lending. So there's not much volatility coming from that. Uh, mm -hmm. Only about 140 billion yeah. in, um, in regional banks. Um, tax exempt actually spiked up a bit, uh, yeah. but nothing uh, what you'd expect. And prepaid gas bonds widen, but again, not as much, probably because those are issued by very large um, banks overall. When we talk about what supports this market going forward, there was some concern, uh, Eve, I, I guess, well, I shouldn't say concern because this would actually help, but there was a lot of discussion here about the relative lack of supply that we were going to see, the idea that the refinancings that you had coming up uh, in the first quarter was going to track less than what we saw, uh, I think, uh, in the first quarter of the previous year. And the idea of what people were expecting uh, for the rest of the year really wasn't going to match up in terms of new issuance, new supply. Absolutely. And we're seeing that being played out. Uh, supply has been anemic, to say the least. We are 20 percent down compared to last year. And last year was 20 percent down compared to the issues before that. Uh, we've been four trillion market today and we were at four trillion mark about 10 years ago. All other debt markets have changed quite a bit. A uh, few things to mention why supply has been so low. Um, interest rates, right? So refinancing just does not look as attractive these days uh, when uh, rates went up 400 plus basis points. Um, secondly, states, local governments are flushed with cash still, you know, mm. post-COVID aid. Uh, economy has been pretty good uh, for all of these issues. They are at the highest level of the reserves. So some of those projects that have to be actually spent out within the next two years or so, um, they have been prompting not even the ongoing operations of the uh, municipalities, but one of big projects. Mm. And third, which I think is the actual biggest culprit of why supply has been low, uh, is actual inflation. Uh, it's inflation, just as you mentioned, government takes some time to prepare uh, for large projects to price them out. And my um, understanding, those prices have increased two, three times. So everyone is going back to the drawing board. Right. At the same time, there is has some uh, movement in inflation going down. So perhaps that is a rational uh, decision to just wait and see. And Eve, just boil that down for us, that point on inflation. I think it's really interesting that that's causing a delay in projects, you know, at the state level, at the municipality level. That really ties back to just the cost of labor, the cost of materials, I assume. 
Yes, yes, everything, right? We're talking about 10, 20 year projects. Uh, there's been issues with supplies. There's definitely issue with labor. Uh, everything that has been pre-planned and now they're ready to issue bonds, it means the process has started at least two years ago. Now those costs have. Mm -hmm. went up at least 6% if, uh, if, uh, if we look at CPI number, right? So I think, again, very rational decision to wait and see uh, on whether inflation will come down. I think on the interest rates, there is an understanding that we're here to stay. Albeit this week changed a couple of um, um, ideas around that, but still, I think the issuers are okay with interest rates staying where they are, mm -hmm. uh, but it's the inflation part of the of this equation that is uh, still up in the air. All right, Eva, great to talk to you. Great stuff. We'll catch up with you soon. Eve Lando there, Thornburg Investment Management's portfolio manager uh, covering the Muni space here. A lot more coming up here.